Good morning, everybody. This is Ren, Post Trip Network. We're going to um, give people a chance to get in here, and we are going to uh, be going live here and talking about Thou Shalt Surely Die is the title of the study today we're going to be looking at. I think it's very important to um, understand what's going on here in Scripture. But we're going to um, we'll give everybody a chance to kind of get in here and everything and see if there's some coming. You're always welcome to visit our site at www.posttribnetwork.org. See hundreds of studies, videos, and that there as well, too. So, um, Mike, have you gotten in here yet? Mm -hmm. You're in here? Yep. Can you type so I know you're in here? I'll see anyone in here. <clears throat> Pardon me. But anyway, let's go ahead and just get get started on some of this and see where we're at. I'm gonna start back in in, in Genesis because in Genesis 2:17, God told Adam that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So God told him that he's going to surely die. If he ate of that tree. And then we have here in, in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3, the next chapter, we see where Eve is, um, let's see right here, let me see right here, um, looking for it. He tells Eve something different, okay? We know the serpent was made of beasts of the field. We're, we're told that he's more subtile than any beast of the field as well, too. We see where the woman, that's Eve, Adam's wife, when he asked her, uh, hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Which is true, God did tell him he could eat of every tree, but then he said, but not of the tree of the garden of good and evil. So here we go. And the woman said unto the serpent, that's Satan, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat of it, neither touch it, or at least you die. So here we have Satan having a conversation with Eve, telling her about, you know, you, you're not to eat, you know, all. Didn't God say you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Didn't he tell you you could eat of all the tree? He's trying to tempt her. He's trying to lure her in. And that's what's going on here. Well, she tells the serpent that, um, that uh, they're not to eat of it. Because if they do, they're going to die. And a serpent said unto her, you shall not surely die. There's the first lie right there. God done told them in Genesis 2 that if they eat of it, thou shalt surely die. And then Satan's coming along and saying, you shall not surely die. He had one word in there, and that word was not. Okay, so we see what's going on here. Satan's tempting her. He's baiting her. He's setting her up. Okay, so here we got. Then he tells her why. For God do, doeth know that in the day ye eat of it thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, they only they only knew they only knew good. Okay? Satan's tempting them to know more than what they know. Okay, he's tempting them. He starts to what well, didn't God tell you, you can eat of all the trees in the garden? You know, and she said, We're not to eat of the one in the mist. Because they're good, they would die. And he tells her, no, you shall not surely die. God knows that when you eat that tree, your eyes are going to be open. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Can you see the tempting? The tempting is tempting her to be more than what God had made her to be. That was the temptation. Let's not forget, Adam was there with her. He wasn't off someplace else. No, it tells us in Scripture that he was there with her. Okay? And when the woman saw that the tree was good, or food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, she desired it, and it was a tree to be desired to make one wise, what would make her wise to her, knowing both good and evil, she thought it was going to make her wise, he, he told her, you, you could be a god, pretty much, he said, <laughs> you shall be as a god, uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a problem right there, so, as we see him setting her up, adding one word, that word not, he set her up 
to see the tree, to desire the tree. It's like, oh, wait a minute. This could make me wise. I could become a god. And she desired it, and she ate of it. And it says that she gave it also unto her husband, that's Adam, who was with her. And he did eat. He ate. And what happened? They didn't die. What happened? And their eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And what they go do? They went and hid themselves from God. See the setup that's going on? So we know that in scripture, we know that the wages of sin is death. So upon every every person, it's death. God told them that they should surely die. That's why we all die. In Genesis 3.19, God told them that in a sweat to Adam, in the sweat of thy uh, face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it uh, thou was taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. So he told him, you're going to go back to dust again. Job 34, 15 says, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. Okay? And it tells us in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It tells us also in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, for as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So Adam's the one that, that they say brings in sin. That's why uh, Christ is referred to as the second Adam in Scripture. Man brought in sin. Man's going to be the one used, which will be God in the flesh, of course. You know, it's going to be more than just a man there. But he's referred to as a second Adam. Let me get that up so I can share that with you exactly where. But he's referred to as a second Adam in um, look at that verse here. <laughs> okay, the first Adam uh, man right here uh, in First Corinthians fifteen fifty four, and also it is written the first man Adam was made a living so, and the last Adam, or the last Adam I should have said I said second Adam but last Adam uh, was made quickening of the spirit. So, you know, we see what's going on here and what's taking place here is God came. You know, he came in the flesh and, and he purchased us with his own blood. But, you know, when he's going to return, we talked about this the other day, when he's going to return, we're, we're going we're gonna to be resurrected. We're going to resurrect. We're going to be made alive from the dead. That's why it, says, uh, it talks about it being swallowed up, death is swallowed up. We'll get more into that here in a minute. But it tells us that the way to sin is death. We know in Adam all died, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And then we're told that it's appointed unto all men wants to die. All men. As it's appointed unto all men wants to die, but after that, the judgment. So we die, and we don't wake again until Christ comes, and that's when we will stand before judgment. And uh, it tells us in Hebrews 9, 27, Romans 5, 12 tells us, Wherefore us, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, that's Adam, and so death passed upon all men for all, for uh, that all have sinned. So that's speaking of Adam there, okay? And it tells us in 1 Corinthians 50, 21, for since, uh, for since uh, by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So you see, see, by man, since by man, that was Adam, came death. By man, that would be Jesus Christ, came also the resurrection of the dead. Okay, so when Christ comes, returns again, because of what he did to cross, when he comes, after his wrath is poured out, he's going to raise us. He's going to remember us, and Job talks about it, and raise us from the dead. Okay, so he's going to, he, we got a point in time for that to happen, for that to take place. So um, we're understanding what's going on here. It says in Romans 5.14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the uh, similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Okay? Who was to come? See, again, it's talking about Christ is the one that's going to come. Christ is the one that came, and he redeemed us with his own blood. So he's going to be the one that's going to come and resurrect us from the dead when that time happens. It tells us in Romans 6.5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection of Christ. What did he do? He died. He 
he uh, rose from the dead. He resurrected. Okay. And that's what's going to happen. We're going to follow in his footsteps and do the exact same thing. We will die. We will be buried and we will be resurrected. Okay. In Romans 6, 16, it says, know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants. You are uh, to whom you obey, whether it be a sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So, you know, we have a choice here. You know, we can, we can, we can serve him until we die. Some will fall away. The scripture tells us that that's going to happen. You know, that's why we need to pray and we need to seek God that that doesn't happen. We continue to seek him daily. I die daily. His mercy is renewed every morning, right. it says, you know, in scripture as well, too. And that's why it's so important that we get into that scripture, get into that word, let that word get deeply into us and hold on. You know, even tells us that God is not slacking his promises, but as long suffering towards us, that none should perish. He don't want us to stay dead. You know, he don't want us to parry. Only God is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. He don't want us to stay dead. He wants us to resurrect, and he wants us to stand before him. He wants us to, you know, that's that's his whole plan. You know, people's like, well, how can God just let us die? He didn't. He came, he died on the cross so that we could resurrect when he comes. The second time when he comes, he'll raise us from the dead. And, and, it's, and, you know, it's really, are we going to raise into to eternal life? Or are we going to raise into eternal death? You know, are we going to be, you know, enter into his kingdom? Or are we going to enter into a place where the body and soul is being able to destroy in hell? That's the choice. And that's the choice that we have to make that decision on, on, on what we want to do. God's not going to force us. He's not going to make us. He's done, he's done, demonstrated his love towards us. It says, while we're yet still sinners, Christ died for us. So he's already done his part. We have to endure and tell me in. Okay, it says right here, uh, he's going to deliver us. Uh, Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Jesus. That's who. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, it tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 26. But listen to this. Isaiah knew about it. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all, all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from off all the earth, from, excuse me, from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruption shall, what's corruption? Our bodies. All right. Corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall it be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So you see what's happening here, what's taking place here? These are things that are told that's going to happen. Okay? Second Corinthians 1 9 says, But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. We can't save ourselves. It's God who raises the dead. So that's what we got. We can't do it ourselves. No matter how much you work out, no matter how many you see people trying to look younger and have surgeries to look younger, get rid of their wrinkles and all that, you're still going to die. You're still going to die because the wages of sin is death. And as long as we live in this fleshly body, we are going to struggle with sin. Until we die, a dead man can't sin. You can't sin anymore after you're dead. Dead know nothing according to scriptures. So 2 Corinthians 1.10 says, Who delivered us from a so great a death, and, and do it deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us, yet deliver us. This is when Jesus returns and he delivers us from the power of death, from the grave. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our mortal bodies. Okay? Sin bringeth forth death, tells us in James 1.15 and Revelation 2.10. Uh, it says, uh, then, when, uh, uh, then when lust have a conceit, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There ain't no way we're getting through this without having to die. A lot of people are thinking, that's why I think it's so dangerous about the rapture teaching. Because they're telling people, you're going to escape death. Yeah. You're not going to have to die. Right. No, 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 no. 
Christ is coming to resurrect us from the dead. That's why it says, but see, it takes part in the first resurrection. That's why it tells us that. Okay, listen to this in John 12, 24. Barely, barely, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. Very important. That's very important that for that to happen in each and every one. Paul called it, I die daily. Yep. And I think that's so, that's such a wonderful thing because, you know, we repent daily. You know, we die daily. We don't do the things that we used to do. I'm very concerned when I see so many churches thinking that you don't have to change. Just keep on living your life as the way you are. No, 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 no. I'm not the same person I was 28 years ago. I'm not the same person that used to drink and do drugs and all the things that I used to do. There was a change that took place, and it continues to happen every day. Everything about you should change. The way you talk, the way you walk, uh, your life, your heart, the hatred shouldn't be in your heart no more. What you're speaking out of your mouth, everything changes when you're in Christ Jesus, those things you used to do begin to die off. Okay? That's why Paul said, I die daily. For the love not our lives unto death, it says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they loved not their lives unto death. They don't see death as um, unpleasure. Right. They see death as if they truly believe in Christ, they're going to see death as victory because uh -huh. they know that if they die in Christ Jesus. They're going to raise from the dead in Christ Jesus. They're going to be partakers in his resurrection as well, too. Okay. So it tells us in scripture and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away or passed away. You know, that's going to be comforting to know that all those things have passed away, that, you know, we no longer, we no longer have to remember those things, you know, uh, of the life before. You know, I'm talking about after we're dead, we're resurrected, you know, when we're in heaven, in the kingdom. You know, we're not, all things are going to, all the, those old things are all going to pass away. You know, I mean, that that's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear, you know, and, and it's so important to understand uh, what's going to happen, you know, we'll be killed out, you know, when, when, uh, you know, if we're still alive, when, when the Antichrist comes, you know, we, we will be killed by the Antichrist. We're the ones he's going to get angry and he's going to be robbed about. And he's going to go after us. It tells us in scripture. So it's, it's very important that we understand what's going on. And I always think Joe put up forth a perfect picture. He says, but man dieth and wastes away. He tells us. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fall from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and rises not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Sleep is death. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me in secret, until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. That that script uh, part right there where it talks about, um, let me go back here and look for it again, where it talks about till the heavens be no more. Peter talked about it, that about the heavens being no more. Uh, Paul talked about the change. Job knew about that, uh, the exact same thing. He knew about death. He knew he wasn't going to stay in the grave. He knew that God would remember him. He knew there was a point in time that God would remember him. That's us. going to remember us. He's going to remember us in the grave after his wrath be passed. Satan's going to have his wrath in the great tribulation. Then God's going to come. Jesus Christ is going to come with his wrath. And then guess what? He's going to remember us and we are going to raise from the dead. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Praise God. You know, we see this. Praise God. Thank God. That, you know, you know, not that we're going to die, but, but, but the fact of the matter is that we stayed faithful into death, that we're not going to stay dead. We're going to be resurrected when Christ comes. That's what's so important here. Don't be afraid of it. Comfort. Uh, 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 Paul talked about it. comfort one another in these words. Comfort them. Comfort them. Tell them, you know, 
you're going to die. You're going to sleep, but you're not going to stay dead. You're not going to stay asleep. You're going to rise when Christ comes. You know, we're to comfort one another with these things. And that's what's so important. He said to edify one another, to encourage one another during this time as we see these days approaching. And we're like, what? What? That's scripture. That's what the scripture says to do. Paul's talking the exact same thing that Job's talking about. It tells us very clear. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep dead, and Jesus will God bring with him. For uh, this we say unto you by the words of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, that's 144,000, the remnant, that's the Jews, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, dead, that's us. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's us. Then we which are alive remain. That's the 144,000 Jews, the remnant. The word remain, remnant means remain. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Why we comfort one another? Telling people, you're not going to stay dead. You're not, do you believe that Jesus rose, died and rose from the dead? Do you believe that? If you truly believe that, then why don't you believe that you will? He made that promise. It's the same God. He told us the same thing. So that's where it is. Where's your faith at? See, that's where our faith has to lay at. We have to understand we have to understand if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then we believe that we are going to die. When he comes, he will raise us too. We have to stand firm in that truth. That's where we need to comfort one another. That's where we need to continue to put our hope in. You know, it tells us to let us, you know, I'm going to read a little bit here and uh, uh, see First Thessalonians now, okay, chapter 5. It's really something to think about. Okay, it says, you are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. So do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, why, why we're not appointed unto God's wrath? Because we're in the grave hidden, remember? Uh, Job said that he would hide us in the grave until what? Till thy wrath be passed. So that's going along with scripture. Job is talking about the same thing that Paul is talking about here in Th uh, Thessalonians. Um, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So this is what we need to be edifying each other about, not telling them a lie and tell them, oh, you're going to get away from all this stuff. You're not going to face anything. You're not going to have to die. You're going to be raptured out of here. That is not scripture. It is nowhere in scripture. We are told that we are going to die. But it tells us we're not going to stay dead because after his wrath passed, he's going to remember us. Praise God. He will remember us and we will wake and we will come out of those graves and we'll be with him forever. That's, that's, that's the blessed hope that that's him. It's, it's, it's all well, what's what we're waiting for. So we have to stay faithful, watch and pray, get into the word, let the word get into you, share the gospel with everyone that you can. You know, I see in signs all over town about, uh, inviting people to church. No, invite them to Christ. Invite them to Jesus. Give them the give them the word and let them come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need to be doing. Given that's the invitation we need to be giving out. Do you know Him? Have you come to Christ? Have you fully given your life to Christ? Is Christ the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning? Is Jesus the first thing that's in your heart? Do you seek him? Do, 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 you, do you pray to him? Do, do you seek him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind we're talking about in the word of God? You know, talk to him. You know, it's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Repent. Repent. He says, for the kingdom is at hand. 
Repent. Continue to repent. You know, uh, too many times they think you just got to say, oh, well, Jesus, come to my heart, forgive me of all my sins, and poof, you're a Christian. It doesn't work that way. That's not in Scripture. So take time to seek him. Seek him with all your heart. Seek him, and he will save you. He will. He made a promise that we should not, that we are not going to stay dead. Don't be, believe the lie of the serpent, the devil. Believe God. Trust in his word. And Jesus promised that he said he went to a prayer place for us, but he promised that he'll be back, that he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's bringing his wrath with him. But he promised he would raise us from the dead. Believe Jesus. God bless.